Today's February 21st, 2019, and the hottest watches on the planet are the ones that are in the most demand in no particular order are the stainless steel 5711 blue dial Patek Philippe, the uh, Rolex 116500, the new ceramic Daytona in stainless steel, uh, the AP 15202 ST, the uh, Rolex Hulk, and uh, the Patek 5980 in steel, blue dial, it's been discontinued. There's a lot of speculation as to why the 5711 uh, paddock has gone bananas. The price has just skyrocketed. Uh, traditionally, though, it's always been a strong piece. It's always been uh, just below the retail prices was the was the trading price or the the sale the used sale price, which has always been that's like the determining factor. How close to the retail price is the sell pre-owned? That tells you how strong it is. Um, with everything going crazy uh, with the you know, stainless steel sport watches, the the 5711 just went insane. Couple factors. Number one, name recognition. So Patek Philippe has always been kind of the uh, the top of the mountain for watch collectors. You want to get yourself a Patek, right? So you go through Rolex, Breitling, Omega, Panerai, Vacheron, all these brands. But you want to one day, as a collector, make sure you get yourself a Patek, right? And Patek uh, has really ingrained themselves into the collectors, you know, community as being the the top of the top. Number two, uh, pop culture has really uh, started to shine a light on on paddocks as well. So in the past, you know, Patek Philippe was like your grandfather's watch, you know, it was, it was a watch that you get at the end of your journey of collecting. Now with the rise of Instagram and uh, a lot of rappers kind of paying attention to uh, Patek, you're seeing, you know, a wide berth of people understanding and knowing what it is. So there's more people being exposed to the brand. And now people who in the past may have spent their money on a Rolex or maybe like an AP, they're going to Patek first. Right? So there's rappers making songs about Patek when in the past nobody knew what the hell it was. So there's literally 12, 13, 15 year old kids who know what a Patek Philippe is, where five, 10 years ago, that was not the case. So a brand awareness has exploded. And when you look at that watch specifically, and in terms of kind of the market, what watch normally is gonna be the hottest watch for a brand, it's usually their lowest price point steel sport watch. So while Patek does have uh, the Aquanaut, um, at, at a little bit, a lower price point. The, um, the Nautilus has been around for a long time. It's been around forever. And, you know, with the integrated bracelet is like the stainless steel sport watch from Paddock. So that watch has gotten all the attention and has skyrocketed. The Rolex Daytona and the explosion in, in demand for that watch uh, started uh, really right around the Newman Daytona craze. So when the, the Newman Daytona, when it auctioned, it was 17 million. It was Paul Newman's Daytona. That watch went insane, and again, same thing. Um, it opened up the world of Rolex to more people. So, you know, this was in Forbes, it was in Wall Street Journal. People who normally didn't even care about watches are now reading and knowing what a Rolex Daytona is. So that's step one. Step two is uh, these people who, so a lot of the people who maybe would have never bought the Daytona, they look around, they see, okay, well, this might be a good investment. So. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of the value that's gone into the uh, Daytona or, or, the, or the rise of the value of the Daytona is that it was people, like speculators, going to buy the watch saying, well, this watch, you know, was an old Daytona. This went berserk. So maybe if I buy one now, it'll go up in value in the future. And then right around the same time, they discontinued the full stainless steel version and released a new version. So created like a, like a whirlwind. Uh, that just shot up the value. So whereas the the older style Daytona, the one the one six five two zero and the one one six five two zero, the full stainless steel versions used to trade, you know, in in the in, you know less than ten thousand um, dollars. Those were discontinued. They released a new version, which out the gate went for roughly twenty thousand dollars because you know the the demand was there and ready for that uh, for that release. That whole like the trifecta. Um, of, of factors, you know, created a buzz around the Daytona. Whereas in the past, Submariner was the number one trading watch from Rolex. Now it's now it's a Daytona, unequivocally. AP took a different route. It's not. It wasn't a crazy auction um, result or really like you know uh, higher brand recognition. What they did was they took advantage of <clears throat> an up market to consolidate their their distribution. So um, now 
there certainly is an up, but there's more attention around the brand just because Swiss watches, there's more attention around them um, in general, you know, like we talked about, you know, because of the social media and whatnot. So uh, the uh, the core model for Audemars is the uh, is the Royal Oak, the stainless steel Royal Oak. So they have what, like a, a the, the regular production piece, which is the 15400 ST or now the 15500. So that started to go up in value. And when more attention was paid to the, to the, um, uh, the market value of these things, people are looking for something that's a little bit more limited. So the 15202 ST, which is a boutique only blue dial piece, it's an homage piece to original jumbo that they made with the, uh, you know, it has a time and date, but no quick set dates, ultra thin, and it's much more limited than the traditional 15400. And the, tr the 15400 was a 41, whereas the, the, um, the 15202 ST was is a 39 millimeter, which is a little bit more wearable across all markets. So for those reasons, that watch started to gain in popularity. And, you know, seeing it, whenever there's a waiting list for, uh, at a manufacturer, the pre-owned price tends to, to rise slowly, slowly, slowly. And that watch went from trading right around 20 to now, you know, easily in the 30s. The Rolex uh, Submariner uh, Hulk edition or the all green edition was released, I believe in 2008. And, you know, it was a little polarizing. It was, it was bright green. In fact, I had a chance to buy one a few years ago for say around 5,000 bucks. And I said, no, it's a little too green. So I decided to pass on it. Well, I made a big mistake. So as, as well as many others who did the same thing, because right now in this market <clears throat> with, um, with an all boats rise scenario and with a lot of heat around the brand uh, Rolex, people are looking for things that might be perceived as special. So the regular Black Mariner trades strong. The Hulk, the green, which is perceived as a special edition, trades even higher. So right now that's a watch that has the same retail roughly, I think maybe it's like $400 more than the Black Mariner, but trades at right now, like thirteen to $15,000. The Paddock reference 5980 in steel with a blue dial was a watch that wasn't always like a hot seller. You know, it sold well below the retail. I wanna say the watch treated 30 to $35,000. Uh, traditionally for, you know, a long, long time. It was discontinued, what, about last year or so? And um, as the paddock craze rose, uh, all the Nautiluses have gone up in value. That watch specifically now is essentially a $100,000 watch, um, which is just, it's bizarre, really, because it's a watch that um, traditionally people would complain. It was, it, it, the bracelet was a little thin, the watch was a little top heavy, and it was a little too big for a paddock. Uh, but in the realm of of just stainless steel sport watches, it's actually very wearable. Um, whereas they, like the 5711, in my opinion, it's a little small. Um, that's a watch that I've coveted for a long time and I've kind of cooled off on it. Uh, whereas the 5980, I think is actually like a much more wearable watch. So that watch quietly rose in value like crazy. So, and, and realistically, all the variants of the 5980, the uh, annual counter chronograph uh, Nautilus have gone up in value. Uh, the rose gold, which also in the past, precious metal watches tended to be perform you know weaker than than stainless steel because of the higher price points. That watch is trading well above retail. That's you know, uh, 110, 115 thousand dollar watch. Even the two tone model, which two tones have always been ranked third in terms of you know the uh, mixes of metals and things like that. The the two tone 5980s now you know used to be 35. 35 to 40, maybe a $50,000 watch. Now, 70s, easy 70s. A lot of what we talked about in this episode has been controversial. Watches going up in value, watches going down in value. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, want to give me your thoughts or give me your criticisms, just shoot me an email right here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe below.